What if you could get completely rid of your chronic pain or chronic fatigue, completely abolish it, but in order to do it, you had to take someone else's feces and put it into your colon and allow their bacteria to take over your gastrointestinal system? Would you do it? So there's a new paper that just came out that suggests you may want to consider it. I want to talk about that paper today. So this is about fecal microbiota transplantation, or FMT. I'm just going to call it FMT from, from now on. And this is for the treatment of fibromyalgia and possibly for the treatment of chronic fatigue syndrome. Now, this is not my own research that I'm talking about today. I've not done this type of study, but sometimes I like to talk about other research, especially when it's out-of-the-box thinking and they're doing something really different from the typical clinical trial. You know, a lot of science is very derivative, very slow steps. It's something like, well, instead of this antidepressant, we'll try this antidepressant or this antidepressant. And it can get boring sometimes. So I really get excited when someone does something very different and they really swing for the fences and try something that's either going to be a huge hit or a huge miss. And this recent paper is a very good example. So I thought it'd be a good thing to talk about today. So we've known for a long time that your microbiome, the bacteria in your gut, can become dysregulated. And when it does, it can cause a lot of problems, particularly in your GI system, like irritable bowel syndrome and a host of other issues. Uh, you can have issues with bacteria overgrowth, or you can have specific types of bacteria that have overgrown and have caused this um, dysregulation that can cause inflammation in a lot of cases. Now, in terms of treating it, there are a lot of different approaches. It could be dietary. It could be taking something like yogurt. It could be prescription prebiotics or uh, probiotics. It could be antibiotics. There's a lot of things that have been used clinically to treat these kind of bacteria overgrowth issues and inflammation in the gut, but sometimes they don't work. And that's where a procedure like FMT can come into play. The idea is that you wipe out using antibiotics, wipe out all the bacteria in a person's gut. Then you take a healthy person's stool sample, and usually via colonoscopy, you introduce that stool sample into the patient's colon and allow that bacteria to overtake the GI system, except this is a healthy balance or ratio of the bacteria. And so you've corrected the problem with bad bacteria being too heavily represented and so now the GI is in a good system, a good state, and the inflammation goes away and the problem goes away. Sometimes for months and, and possibly even a year plus in some cases. So this has been used for, I, I don't know, probably 50 plus years. So there's nothing odd or weird or novel about using a stool sample to introduce into a patient's GI system to fix problems. It's been done for, for quite a while, and we know that it helps reducing inflammation in some cases. But there's a newer idea now, and that is, what if by doing this fecal microbiome transfer, it helps more than just GI problems? What if it can actually correct systemic problems like fibromyalgia, like chronic fatigue syndrome? Uh, and there's a lot of evidence that's come out over the last, let's say, five, six years to suggest that may be the case. We're learning more about how inflammation in the gut can prompt inflammation in other places in the body, including in the brain. So inflammation can start in your GI system, then can leak out into your system and enter the blood supply. And then some of those signalers can cross the blood-brain barrier and aggravate microglia and cause fatigue and chronic pain. And there's also other ways that the gut can talk to the brain where if you have inflammation in the gut, it can prompt inflammation in the brain. And so in a lot of chronic pain and fatigue cases, it may be that the origin of the issue is actually a problem in the gut. And so if we want to fix the problem for those patients, we have to calm down the inflammation in the gut first. Um, so that'd be required to actually take care of the issue. So would FMT work uh, in those cases? Uh, we need to do the clinical trials to find out, and those trials are happening right now. There's already been the animal science studies that suggest that it would work, but now we have to try it in patients. 
So my colleague, um, Catherine Seaton and her group in the United Kingdom are preparing to do this study in MECFS. And that's a project that's funded by Solve MECFS. They're working on regulatory processes right now. The regulatory steps can take a very long time. They can take over a year to get through all those processes, but they're working on it. And then we'll find out when they conduct that study, can FMT actually help reduce myalgic encephalomyelitis chronic fatigue syndrome or, or chronic fatigue syndrome? So we'll find out. In the meantime, though, and as soon as they report that, I'll, I'll be very interested in reviewing those results and telling you about them. But while we wait for that, another group out of Shanghai actually did this study, but on fibromyalgia pain instead of MECFS. So this group published the results um, just pretty much last month, in the last month, and they published in the Journal of Pain. It's a very good journal. I've published in there many times. And so when I saw this pop up a couple of weeks ago, I thought we really need to talk about this. This is a very novel approach to treating fibromyalgia, pain, and fatigue. And I will tell you, the results are really, really interesting. So let's, uh, let's talk about this. The study had 45 patients, 45 fibromyalgia patients. They were randomized into two groups. They were either put into the FMT group, so they would have the microbiota transplantation through a colonoscopy, or they were in the control group. Now, there was no placebo, so there was no blinding or anything like that. The control group actually received duloxetine, and duloxetine is one of the three big treatments for fibromyalgia. So everyone received some kind of treatment. The control group got the oral uh, duloxetine, uh, standard dosage, and this is a serotonin norepinephrine retic uh, inhibitor, so an SNRI. It's very commonly used in fibromyalgia. So control group got the duloxetine. The FMT group also got duloxetine, but then they also had the transfer of the stool sample to change their microbiome. So they received duloxetine plus FMT. That was the difference. Control group just got the standard antidepressant uh, SNRI. So after the FMT group received their uh, procedure, they were tracked for 12 months. And by the way, you know, there are a lot of preparatory, you know, um, steps behind the process. The sample itself goes through a lot of steps to prepare it for this type of procedure. And then there are steps to change the microbiome. Usually you take antibiotics to clean out the gut before this. So I'm not going to go into how this procedure is. This paper, which does describe the procedure, I'll put a link to the paper. I don't know if it's open access. Uh, I can't tell because it pops up on my computer, but I'm in a, a medical library environment, so they usually do. I don't know if it'll open up for you, but I'll put the link there just in case it is open access. And you can look and see exactly how they do that if you're interested. But for right now, I'm just interested in the results. So they tracked them for 12 months. So for an entire year after the FMT. So what happened to the fibromyalgia pain for a year after FMT? Did it work? Did it last? Now let's, let's take a look. So I want to tell you that um, if you didn't know this, uh, bioscientists or clinical scientists like myself, we tend to not read papers normally. Like when we get a new paper, we typically don't read page one and page two and page three. We generally pick up the paper and say, where's the pictures? So it sounds funny, but it, it's true. We go straight for the pictures because if the authors did a good job at their figures, it tells us everything that we need to know. We don't even have to, at least at first, we don't even have to read the rest of it. This tells the complete story. And when we've been doing it for a long time, uh, we generally have these kind of immediate gut reactions just by glancing at the figures. And for me, I have three main types of reactions when I look at a new paper and I go straight to the results. I'll either have a, yeah, okay, that's what I would expect, type of immediate reaction. Sometimes I have a, wow, that's really impressive reaction. That's less common, it happens. And then sometimes I have a, this is suspicious, something's fishy here. And that happens a lot as well. And there are other minor reactions, but those are the three big ones. 
When I looked at the results, when I went to the first results page of this paper, my reaction was, now that, that's impressive. Is this too impressive? Because this is really astounding. That was my response. So let me tell you why I had that reaction and show you what I was looking at and why I think this is really, really, really interesting. So what I want to show you first is the primary outcome. And so when you do a clinical trial, you usually have a single primary outcome. There may be dozens of things that you look at, but you have to identify one as the main thing that you're looking at. And so for fibromyalgia, the main thing is usually the numerical rating scale or the NRS. And I'm showing that to you now. And we use it because it's really straightforward. It's super easy. It's a scale from zero to 10, zero means no pain at all, and 10 is the worst pain imaginable. And so it's a very simple way of tracking the severity of your fibromyalgia pain over time. So what we're looking at here are the two groups. The bottom line, which is blue, is the FMT group, and then that red line is the control group who just received duloxetine. Now what we can see here is that they both started, both groups started at around a seven out of 10. And that's very typical for fibromyalgia. That's a moderately debilitating level of pain. It's a serious level of pain. It will, it will impede on the quality of your life for sure. And we want to take seven down significantly to restore quality of life. So we can see that first uh, point on the left is before the procedure. And then the next point is a week after the procedure. And you can see that their symptoms were already starting to um, decrease in both groups. But I'm going to focus on the blue line, the FMT, for right now. So it went down at one week, then it continued to go down at one month. And at one month, we see a divergence between the two groups. The control group bottomed out, they flattened out at that point. However, the FMT group with the transplantation continue to have their symptoms drop. And so it dropped at th two months, it dropped at three months, it dropped at six months and it dropped at 12 months. So a year later, their pain was still going down. And we don't know what would have happened after 12 months. It might have stopped there. It might have continued to go down. It might have rebounded and gone back up. We don't know. Regardless, having effects after a year is still incredibly impressive. And really what I want to point out here is at a year, they were at a two, a pain level of two. And a two pain is negligible. I mean, it's it's a nuisance. It's something that will barely demand your attention. It's something that won't impede in your life at all. And so they went from a seven, which is debilitating, to a two, which is nothing, with this one FMT treatment plus the daily duloxetine. So, you know, I, you probably can tell just from the information I've given you how how important that is. Because while I can't say that that cured the fibromyalgia, it essentially did in terms of the person's day-to-day -day life. It basically removed fibromyalgia from being an issue. Now, what's also amazing is it wasn't just the pain. It This FMT actually affected multiple other outcomes. I'm going to show you a couple. There's quite a few, but I'll only show you two. One is the hospital anxiety depression scale. So as you can guess, it measures anxiety and depression. And what we can see is that really we see the same pattern with anxiety and depression being reduced significantly at 12 months. It just gets better and better. The anxiety and depression subside more and more at each month. Really, really impressive. And then also let's look at um, the multidimensional fatigue inventory, the MFI. It's the same thing. So not just did pain go down, Chronic daily fatigue went down substantially as well and still was low at a year. This is incredible. I mean, their fatigue, this is rated out of zero to 100. Their fatigue was 80 when they started. And then at a year, it was 20. And again, just like pain, if your MFI is 20, that means you're just a little tired. In fact, I would almost call that kind of normal level, healthy adult kind of level of fatigue. So no problem at all. So really, um, everything looks good here. 
uh, all the all the procedures, uh, how they reported things, look good to me. I have to admit that um, you know I initially had a this seems too good to be true reaction. I still have that to a little bit, but a little bit, but I don't have a particular issue with the study. It's just that you know after doing this for so long, we were always cautious when we see something that looks really really effective. But this could be one of the huge answers. If these results, I can say this with confidence, if what I just showed you, if what they reported, if this is truly representative of how the overall fibromyalgia population will react to FMT, this is groundbreaking. This is something that in the future, maybe something that almost every FM person will want to do because it's just so profoundly effective. Now, I do have some minor concerns, and I, and I do mean minor. Uh, I don't have any super serious concerns. Uh, as you probably can guess, I wish that there was a group that didn't have the duloxetine. And I can't get into this, but there's a reason why everyone received duloxetine. The, this research group actually has some evidence that this is working via serotonergic or serotono serotonin channels. And so the duloxetine actually plays an important role in that. I'm not going to get into that, but it might be that for this to work, it requires a drug that's impacting the serotonin system together with the FMT. But I don't know that that's true. The only way to know that is to test FMT by itself. So I wish they would have done that, but I do understand why they didn't. But ultimately, we'll have to see FMT by itself, at least in one group. Um, I was also kind of suspicious. The control group had a really nice reaction to duloxetine. It looks stronger and more durable than I typically see duloxetine. But it's not an outrageous effect, so it's possible. So they may have just kind of had a lucky, really good response to the control group. And the last thing is the time response. I'll show this to you again. It's not what you typically see in FMT studies. Usually you see incredible improvement within a couple of days. And then over a year, those results will start to slide back as the person's original microbiome starts to take back over again. Now, that's for GI problems. And so I say that this is not what we typically see, but this has never been done in fibromyalgia before. So it may be that this is just the way it looks when instead of targeting gut problems, you're actually targeting kind of systemic pain and systemic uh, fatigue issues. So this may be the true response, which is actually better than what we see in the classic use of FMT for GI problems. So really, really, really intriguing. So where I'm at right now is I'm cautiously optimistic. This needs to be followed up immediately. I'm assuming this research group is going to do their next study with something this big. They're obviously going to be going for the next confirmatory steps as well they should. And I would like to see other groups, independent groups, test this as well in other locations. So I'd love to see, for example, a study in the United States doing this exact same thing in making sure that fibromyalgia patients from different countries react the same way to this uh, procedure. Um, I would, of course, also want to see a study where, as I said before, it's tested with duloxetine and without duloxetine to find out just how critical the duloxetine part is for this uh, FMT treatment. So that would be really important uh, to find out. So I'm going to wait for um, Dr. Seaton's work out of the UK and MECFS, and that's going to be really important as well when we find out, is this just for fibromyalgia, or is this going to work for a range of chronic pain and chronic fatigue disorders? Because there are so many conditions where we're just waiting for something to come through that's actually going to move the needle and help those people. And, you know, this is one study, but right now this is looking promising as one of those treatments that are really, really going to make a difference. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about that study. Just remember the FMT and what it's about. Kind of store that back in your brain somewhere because this will definitely come up again. And uh, we will be talking about this in the future. It may be another year or so before we talk more about it, but uh, definitely remember this. This is one to keep an eye on. So please, uh, if you have questions, uh, throw them down in the discussion. I'm not a mi microbiome expert, and so there'll be some questions I just won't be qualified to answer, but there'll be some that I'll be comfortable talking about. So throw your questions down there, and I'll get back to a few. 
and I will be back next Monday with another video. So I'll see you soon.